Hi, welcome to HNL Agra's Let's Talk Potatoes, Irish Potatoes. I'm your host, Sharilla Gordon Moat. Now, for today's session, we will not only speak about the three Irish potato varieties that HNL Agra offers, but every single thing that you need to know to ensure that your potatoes grow. Now, we couldn't be speaking here today about Irish potatoes without first hearing a few words from our Irish potato suppliers over there in Holland. Let's welcome HZPC. Dear directors, clients of Hardware and Lumber Jamaica, thank you very much for this opportunity to be here with you in this seminar. Uh, we're in Holland with HFPC ready uh, to deliver our products, our Irish potatoes. I'm standing here in front of a big pile of uh, Memphis, this excellent new variety, uh, more sustainable, more drought, resi drought resistant. Um, come here and I'll show you. Red potato, a nice alternative to the spunta that which you're so used in Jamaica. Uh, these new varieties you've been testing uh, in Jamaica, they have yielded excellent results and we're sure that they can help uh, a lot your farmers to develop their market uh, of Irish potato in Jamaica. Uh, you can see we're standing in a nice warehouse like many we have here in Holland, uh, the product is being bagged and uh, we're ready to serve you for another successful season. Goodbye. All right, all right. Almost there, people, almost there. Now, what do you know about Irish potatoes? A few quick facts for you about Irish potatoes. Irish potatoes are one of Jamaica's most popular vegetables. The edible part of the plant is an underground stem called a tuber, not to be confused with a root. Irish potatoes contain 2% protein and 18% starch. So for all the people who are serving meals and you're using potato as the side order for vegetable, mm -mm, that's just additional starch. And last but not least, Irish potatoes are an inexpensive source of carbohydrates and when prepared properly, provide good amounts of vitamins and minerals. Now, earlier I would have mentioned the fact that HNL Agro provides three varieties of Irish potatoes. They are Spunta, Primabel, and Memphis. Let's hear from the team in the field about the features and characteristics of each potato. My name is Kingsley Palmer and we are currently in Redford which is located in the parish of Manchester. Today we are here to highlight the features of Irish potato and specifically spunta. Some of the main characteristics of spunta are one, it's a grade A Irish potato. It matures in approximately 84 days. It's high yielding, in fact it gives about 12 to 14 tubers per plant. It has an extremely long shelf life as compared to other varieties and it can be grown in just about any soil type condition. Okay, let us focus now on the agronomic characteristics of this particular variety, which as, as I said earlier on is Spunta. It high, uh, has a high resistant in terms of a di resistant disease package and some of the diseases that are, um, it's this variety is, is particularly resistant to are one, early blight, late blight, alternaria, scab, nematode, and, and, and also um, powdery mildew. Yes, let's look at our Memphis variety and its main characteristics and features. Memphis is an early maturing crop the mature is within 66 days. It has a high yielding ca capability of 9 to 11 tubers per plant. It has a long shelf life. Go in all soil types and conditions. Memphis has a good resistant disease package. 
against disease such as early blight, late blight, powder, powder mildew, put, um, ne um, nematodes, wart disease, and other diseases that affect Irish potatoes. Okay, let's look at some of our Prima Bell Irish potato variety characteristics. Now, Prima Bell is an A grade Irish pot 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 potato var variety that matures in about 84 days. It has, it is, it has high yielding pro um, potential, producing about 12 to 14 tubers per plant. It's an ex extremely um, good shell shelf life that makes it ideal for storage. It also grows in all soil type and conditions, with, which gives it great adaptability to the myriad, myriads of soil type found here in Jamaica. As it re re relates to, to the varieties characteristics, um, early tuberi tu tuberalize tuberization um, that, 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 is, that results in early mat maturity, as mentioned early on, um, good yielding, um, average of 12 to 14 uniform tuber per, per plant, very high yielding potential, potential as highlighted early on. Um, broad adaptation to various environmental conditions, which is, um, which is a, um, a, a, a most paramount characteristic um, for, for a potato variety. Um, it's suitable for growing in all soil, soil type, um, good resistance package, meaning that it offers you our clients um, um, resistance towards a plethora of diseases that generally affects potato production. Some of these diseases include um, foliage blight, tuber blight from um, Altenera solanae, um, early blight, phytophthora in infestants, which we all know is a devastating um, disease or pathogen that can totally wipe out out a crop overnight. It also have very good viral resistance. So for your for your potato vi vi um, um, viruses, it offer you good resistance to those as well. No, no. Um, last but but not least, the beauty of, of this variety as, as well is that it has very good nematode resistance. So you won't get that um that 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 sort of um damaged tuber. That, 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 that is not aesthetically ple ple pleasing. So you'll, you'll have the ability to produce potatoes that are quite um, a a a a a a aesthetics with a smooth outer skin. Now before we get into the cooking and the eating of the Irish potatoes, let's first hear about some of the growing practices of the Irish potatoes and how to really care for your Irish potatoes even before and after they go into the field. Help me welcome Mr. Andre Gordon, H&L Agro's Market Development Officer for the Southern Region. Welcome, Andre. How are you doing? I'm fine, Shirley. Thank you for having me. All right. No problem. Now, Andre, before we even get into the, the land preparation stage, is there anything that needs to happen before that? So, for example, persons might be wanting to know, um, you know, what are, what are some of the areas that Irish potatoes are planted in? Um, what are those Irish potato seasons? You want to tell us a little about that? Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, we have some traditional areas that persons plant Irish potatoes in and at a particular time of the year. Now, we have some common areas, such as Guy's Hill, Cascade in Manchester, Darlestad, Spallings, Hanslow, and Christiana. And these are some of the major crop um, growing um, areas for Irish potato. Now, the steel starts within from, the, from October mm -hmm. up to about February. Okay. But most persons, we have bookings will, will come, come in at, at, in October. The planting season will start within November to January for Guy's Hill, for Cascade between December to January, for Darlestown between November to January, for Spallings December to January, and Honslow December to January. And for Christiana, which mm -hmm. is a, of a higher elevation and cooler climate, mm -hmm. is from February to March. 
So these are some of the going areas within our region. All right, so now is a good time for persons to you know, call their HL yes. Agro representative, come into the HL Agro stores and get their Irish potato seeds. Start making seeds. The, the, those bookings. Okay, awesome. Now let's talk a little about the, the land preparation side of things. Okay. Land preparation for Irish potato production is key and of uttermost importance. Without proper land preparation, but we'll find that there we have, we have a low, we have a low production, uh, production. We want high productivity and high yield, so we recommend that land should be plowed or forked mm -hmm. at a depth of 12 to 20 inches, mm -hmm. which we work out to mm -hmm. 30 centimeters or 50 centimeters, mm -hmm. or three to, four, three to four months prior to Mm -hmm. the planting of the potato. Okay. So it's like a pre -pre 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 prepared. So you have to actually plow, clear land, plow, and plow at a correct depth. You want a correct depth to be plowed because you want room root mm -hmm. for the tubers to grow and expand, absorb moisture, absorb nutrients, mm -hmm. and be very productive. Okay, so they Good? need space. Yes. It's um, common for no persons to add organic matter to give additional nutrients to the, to the soil. This is during the time of um, um, plowing, so you have to incorporate that into the plow. Mm -hmm. Or persons can use um, our 40 plus um, fertilizer that have organic, organic based mm -hmm. fertilizer, which um, the blend is 4-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. Also, trenches mm -hmm. should be dug 3 to 4 chains per square, per square, per square are 30 to 40 chains per acre. Mm -hmm. Now, the trenches are very important, especially in areas where we have heavy rainfall. Mm -hmm. We want to reduce the amount of water that is on the soil surface, mm -hmm. so you have good amount of drainage to take away that amount of the excess of water from the soil. Okay, all right, no problem. What are, what's a furrow? A furrow, all right, a furrow is like a bed-like structure mm -hmm. that basically persons would plant on. Okay. So it's a raised bed. Okay. So um, for hilly terrain, then, the, the, that's where furrows come in? Yes. For hilly terrain, you basically would, would, would cut along the, it actually, along, along the, the contour of the land. So furrows should be established two to three feet apart and three and six inches or nine inches in depth. Mm -hmm. So this is where you actually would plant the, the iron potatoes. On hilly terrain, you run furrows along the contours. Okay. What that does mm -hmm. is to reduce the flow of the water, the mm -hmm. reducing um, 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 er erosion from the um, the okay. taking place. On level land, you run furrows north to south so that potatoes can benefit from maximum sunlight. Mm -hmm. And ice potato requires sunlight, and it requires for for the for the to, to, to take place and for the food for, for the food to be developed within the tubers. You cut furrows a few days before planting so as to mini minimize weed growth. Okay. All right, no problem. All right, so is it then that I just go into the store and I buy like, you know, like a pack of um, potato seed? Um, you know, how how walk me through the, the potato seed planting. All right, so process. we we actually supply potatoes in, in sacks. Okay. And they so come... kind of like this one, yes, that's, right, that's right, right here. here. Okay. They come in um, different sizes. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have personal for a big seed mm -hmm. and so small and fine seed. Okay. So big seed is basically of a bigger nature. Some persons in planting the big seed, what they do is to cut these into bits. Okay. So it will actually give you cover a larger amount, more large amount of land. Mm -hmm. When you do cut these, these, it is important for persons to treat them mm -hmm. before planting. Okay. Because you don't want any fungus, any disease that could be transmitted from seed to seed mm -hmm. and affect the, 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 the whole plant mm -hmm. and reduce your, your, your production. So you treat your, your seed and allow it to dry. So when you treat these with, uh, with your fungicide mm -hmm. and insecticide, you allow them to dry on an area, and then you can rebag, re then you can plant them. Okay, all right. So what, uh, you mentioned um, you know, fungicide and, and insecticide. Is there a special mixture? Yes, so we, make, we would actually recommend a cocktail mix mm. for the treatment. Mm -hmm. And this cocktail mix will comprise of your the fungicide and insecticide in the form of Redamil and Amistar, which, is, which are, which are we're a super, um, a super combination of, of, of fungicide 
and NGOs are very powerful insecticide and these are also systemic and systemic um, um, chemicals get in the system of the of, of the of, of the of the tuber so when you plant them it give you that protection from early out mm. okay all right no problem um, you know uh, in persons often refer to cultural practices as it relates to um, you know different different seeds and, and, and crops you want to walk us through some of those right. for Irish potato so cultural practices are these are measures that you put in place to protect your your entire crop mm -hmm. so your disease control in Irish potato is very is, is of paramount importance we have a number of disease that have got to affect the, the, um, the, the, the crop at an early stage mm -hmm in the middle stage and at the late stage. So it's important for farmers to protect these, these crops. So persons should do, do weekly or so as to weekly um, 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 prevention, so to prevent potato from being affected by any disease. So it is a routine, I would say, that you have a routine spraying schedule to control any form of disease or pests. You do your regular scouting, mm -hmm. which is very important. Mm -hmm. Scouting is to identify the, if there's any disease or pests affecting mm -hmm. the the crop and we would when doing so you identify the proper treatment mm -hmm. to control mm -hmm. or to mitigate mm -hmm. or to prevent the, the, the spread of the disease so it's important that you treat it with the right thing at the right time at the right time okay weed control is also important we want to we want to reduce the amount of weeds that will compete with your crop during the productive production um, period mm -hmm. so you actually you actually Reduce the weed by taking out any excess weed mm -hmm. by through molding. Mm -hmm. It's a process called molding where you support the, 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 the plant with additional soil around the roots. Mm -hmm. And at that time, additional weed will remove those weeds also. Okay. Fertilization is also important as plants will need adequate and suitable nutrients for development. It's best done on furrows and buried before germination of seeds. So what is to explain that? Mm -hmm. You would dig your, cut your, your furrows, you would apply your fertilizer, mm -hmm. and then you would light the cover. Mm -hmm. Then you light the cover with soil? With soil. Okay. Then you put your seeds into those furrows and cover. Okay. Now, you don't want to put your fertilizer on top of your seeds, mm -hmm. and then water will actually damage and damage the seeds, so you put it below. Okay. So when the roots start to emerge, it will absorb the nutrient from the soil oh, into the okay. into the root system, mm -hmm. into the shoot system, into the leaf, and have your, your plant growing in a productive way. All right, so Andre, interesting stuff, right? But let's talk a little bit more about the 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 weed, the weed management and, and how that really affects farmers and, and their crops that they're trying to grow, especially Irish potato. Weed management in Irish potato is very critical. Mm -hmm. And in any crop production, as a matter of fact. Weed is, weeds are very competitive mm -hmm. and they comp compete with, with, with your crop for space, mm -hmm. for sunlight, for nutrients and what that, that does, does it reduce the amount of yield mm. or the quality okay. of your crop. So it is important to, for us to have a good weed management program. A good weed management program starts from land preparation. Okay. So you would apply the correct and the suitable herbicide to reduce or minimize the weed. During your productive period, mm -hmm. you also remove weed that will compete mm -hmm. with the, the crop. And we recommend that we remove the weed at a, at a young stage, mm -hmm. not at the mature stage that so can be re regenerated through their um, the, the, the seeds. So at the young stage, remove the weed, give the plant a more competitive advantage mm -hmm. over the weeds. Okay. So you could be fertilizing, you could be really taking care of your potatoes and they're not growing because your field is overrun by weeds that are soaking up all the lovely nutrients, nutrients. that you're trying to give to your potatoes. Exactly so. All right, no problem. All right, so in terms of some of h and Agro's solutions for, for, for weeds and weed, and weed management, what are some of those products? Briefly. Okay, the h and Agro provides a wide range of herbicides in your... In, in, in your in your weed management program mm -hmm. and one such is your dual goal mm -hmm. which is a pre-emergent and early post herbicide now explain that the dual goal it is a super product what it does it kills weed seed as i mentioned before the lamp pressure should be done three months prior to mm -hmm. to planting when you have put prepare your soil and plow that soil and leave it to weather 
and come to a fine tilt, mm -hmm. then you would apply your dual gold on the surface of the soil. Mm -hmm. Now, at, at a high moisture level. Okay. So it will be moist. If it is not that moist, we do um, through natural rainfall, mm -hmm. we can use irrigation and okay. apply that, that herbicide by spraying it in a reverse um, um, action. Now, that moisture will act actually activate the active ingredient in, mm -hmm. in the herbicide. The seed, weed seed will absorb that active ingredient mm -hmm. and kill the weed seed, okay. giving you a more control, like a, a three month control mm -hmm. for, for, um, for weeds. The other herbicide we have in our arsenal is our Reglo. Mm -hmm. It's a post emergent herbicide. Fusilade also is a mm -hmm. post emergent herbicide. And our Pillar Buzin, mm -hmm. which is a very good product, mm -hmm. it's a post emergent and a pre emergent herbicide that should be applied. To, your, to, to control your weeds. Mm -hmm. The purple abuse can be applied during the productive stage of your crop. Okay. It will not affect your, your ash potato, mm -hmm. but it will kill the weeds that, affect, that, that, that are competing with the uh, ash potato. The potato. All right, thank you so much, Andre, for joining us here today. And folks, we really heard a lot um, you know, about ensuring that your land is prepared before you plant your Irish potato seeds and all you need to know about the products and practices to ensure that you keep those pesky weeds at bay. Up next, we're going to be hearing from Mr. Kingsley Palmer, the Market Development Officer for Syngenta in Jamaica, who will be speaking to us about pest management. Mr. Palmer, welcome, welcome, and thank you for joining us on Let's Talk Potatoes, Irish Potatoes. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. And how are you? I'm fine as well. Wonderful. All right. So, Mr. Palmer, today we're going to be speaking about pest management. Now, for the, for the, for the viewers, just let us know in the, in the agricultural terms, what is a pest and what are the major pests that affect agricultural crops, especially Irish potatoes in Jamaica? Okay. A pest is a living organism. Mm -hmm that is cause um, adverse reaction to plants when they, were, they attack them. So the, the, some of the major pests that are involved mm -hmm. are the white flies, mm -hmm. the thrips, mm -hmm. the mealybugs, caterpillars, mm -hmm. weevils, nematodes, snails, mm -hmm. scale insects, mm -hmm. midge and leaf hoppers. All right, so we see the caterpillar, them just like, crawl up and down about the place and them can really hurt your plants. Yes. Okay, all right, no problem. Now, what kind of impact um, do these pests have on, on crop production in Jamaica? Well, they affect the quality mm -hmm. and the quantity of the crops that, um, of, the, of the economic crops that um, are to be reaped. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it affects the whole marketability of the crops, mm -hmm. the, the threat to food security. The, some of these test pests also um, cause other, other um, diseases mm -hmm. that are of, um, Import, economic importance to the crops. They reduce the viability of store, store, store produce. Mm -hmm. For example, um, like a weevil mm -hmm. affects your, your, your red peas whenever you, mm -hmm. you know. That's not nice. Yes, um, so they affect store crops there. They also affect the site of injury. Mm -hmm. uh, they cause injury to the plants mm -hmm. and, um, or to the fruit. Mm -hmm. So whenever they, that, that, that injury is created, mm -hmm. then you have um, secondary infection. Uh, the plant, the, the, the potato might eventually gets rot, and it's okay. not marketable, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not good for. And so, in in the long run, the farmer himself loses mm -hmm. because it's the, the, the 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 quality of the mm -hmm. produce is being compromised. Okay, so Kingsley, I go supermarket, right? I reach home with a bag of potato, right? I might not be ready for the, for the, for the, for the potatoes just yet, and I just leave them in my kitchen on, on, on my counter. And then eventually I see some things taking place. Like, where do these things really come from? Well, pests are, pests are all around, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the, in the just environment. Just in your house? In the environment, just, yes. You have rodents, um, mm -hmm. infestation in your, in, in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you take the produce with the with the, with the pathogen mm -hmm. onto the plant, mm -hmm. you know, so you transfer it mm -hmm. from one from one point to the other. To the other. All right, no problem. No, I'm sure nobody wants these pests for you know their potatoes or any other produce, right? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Palmer, as a as a farmer, 
growing Irish potatoes in the field, what are you know, some of the solutions that h and Agro has to offer to get rid of these pests? Well, we have chemicals which are both um, humanly friendly mm -hmm. and environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. And um, which we have in our portfolio, so we have product insecticides like your NGO, your Match, mm -hmm. Tracer, Octara, mm -hmm. Pegasus, um, Karate, Zian, Silicran, and some BTs, we call them BTs, like, mm -hmm. the, the, like the Zentari, Pipel, and the Agri. Okay, yes. so the, 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 pronounce them again for me then? Zentari, it starts on the X. Mm -hmm. Zentari, Agri, mm -hmm. and um, Dipel. Dipel. All right, now in layman's terms, what does the BT stand for? It's a bacteria, bacteria, Bacillus steurogenesis. It's really a bacteria, that's mm -hmm. the active ingredient. Okay. It's really a bacteria, and it's but a Bacillus. You know, the bacillus have different shape. Mm -hmm. You have well, this, you have this streptococcus, cocci, and all right, bacillus. All right, Mr. Bacillus. <laughs> so it's a right, bacillus. Your gun is in you know, a word when me can't pronounce, but I'm sure for the farmers out there, I'm sure you, I'm sure you know. I'm sure you know what, what, what these things are. All right, no problem. And of course, all of these products um, are, are, are things that you can find at yes. h and But you have to use it as, at a specific rate for you to, to get a proper control. Mm -hmm. So for example, your NGO is half mm -hmm. a teaspoon per gallon of water. Mm -hmm. The match is mm -hmm. one teaspoon per gallon of water. Actara, mm -hmm. half a teaspoon. Pegasus, mm -hmm. one teaspoon. Vertimec, three ml. Mm -hmm. About two thirds of a teaspoon to a gallon of water. Mm -hmm. Your karate is Zian. Same half, one teaspoon, silicon, about 10 ml, which is about tea, equivalent to two teaspoons. Mm -hmm. And the tracer is one to two teaspoons per five gallons of water. Mm -hmm. And the BTs, you can use two tablespoons per gallon of water. Okay. And of course, you know, when our farmers come in to, to, the, to the agro stores, you know, they do get the expert advice or when they speak to any of our market development officers or our technical sales representative, they do get the technical advice that they need to ensure yeah. that they're, they're going through these things properly. All right. So, Mr. Palmer, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, viewers, up next on Let's Talk Potatoes, Irish Potatoes, we're going to be hearing from Mr. Richard Grant, HNL Agro's Market Development Officer for the Northern Region. All right, so Richard, welcome to Let's Talk Potatoes. Wonderful, Irish, great being here. Irish potatoes, of yes, course. Yes, Irish potatoes. All right, so Richard, you're here with us today to speak about, you know, um, disease management in Irish potatoes. Now, what are some of the diseases that, that commonly are the most common diseases that affect Irish potatoes? Um, well, first and foremost, you know, speaking of disease, what we're really referring to here mm -hmm. is um, pathogenic disease. That means disease that is causing from a pathogenic organism, mm -hmm. right? Because disease really are brought tremendous um, different things that cause mm -hmm. different diseases. For, so just to highlight the specifics, we, we really speak into disease that are caused by microbe. Mm -hmm. um, and majority of the time, the mm -hmm. disease encountered, we don't know, potato production mm -hmm. is either by bacteria mm -hmm. or fungus, so, so, oh. so to speak. Um, potato um, is highly susceptible mm -hmm. to different type of diseases. Mm -hmm. Some of the common diseases um, known locally mm -hmm. that can be really troublesome mm -hmm. is um, your, your late blight mm -hmm. or your Phytophthora in infestans, mm -hmm. wh which is the my, my, my which is the microbe, mm -hmm. um, it is extremely um, um, devastating and mm -hmm. actually um, there's no warning signal mo oh. most time when it really mm -hmm. attack your crops. So just and, attack your plant and, and, just it, and the attack happens um, late evening to overnight. So you come back oh. in the morning, look at the farm and your crop is totally devastated. Mm -hmm. sta okay. stated. We also have um, 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 Altenera, mm -hmm. uh, our, um, our, our early, uh, our early blight. Mm -hmm. um, we, we also have um, stuff like um, powdery mildew, mm -hmm. um, fused virium wilt, um, stem rot. Mm -hmm. The other disease called called black leg as, as, as well. We have we have also um, 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 scabs or, mm -hmm. or, or and scruffs. Mm -hmm. We also have um, bacterial issues or mm -hmm. bacterial leaf spot that 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 can also develop. But in saying, saying, saying this, it is um, very much important for mm -hmm. one to pay a lot of attention to mm -hmm. disease management, management. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't have a good or robust disease management program, mm -hmm. you, I mean, the, 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 the possibility mm -hmm. of failure really 
um, um, heightens. But that's of course where h and Agro comes in. Exactly. All right. So what are some of the must-have products that farmers need to have? You can't, you can't say you're a farmer. All right. And you can't say you're a grow potato without having these. So looking at the spectrum of diseases that actually affect um, potato production mm -hmm. lo 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 locally and our selection of, of um, um, products that is highly effective against this. Mm -hmm. One of those um, damaging the, the, the disease that is widespread is, of course, our um, um, fight, it's called from fight, fight after. And a product that is highly effective against that is our Rido Mill. Because mm -hmm. Rido Mill con con contains metalaxyl that mm -hmm. is highly effective against controlling the water mole and mm -hmm. fight after falls within the water mole group of, um, of um, my, my microbes. But um, other pro products that should be a part of your mm -hmm. arsenal, like chemicals apart from your Rido Mill mm -hmm. is your Amistar that mm -hmm. offers you a wide spectrum range of, of control to the four major um, fungal groups that generally affects agricultural um, um, crops. Also another potent product mm -hmm. that farmers can incorporate as a part of their um, disease management um, um, program is SCORE. Mm -hmm. And SCORE is highly effective in terms of controlling majority mm -hmm. of your leaf, leaf, leaf spot or folia diseases. Sankozeb, Brav, and um, Bravo, these are um, contact herbicides which give mm -hmm. you um, protective um, coverage in that it creates a barrier mm -hmm. be between the plant and the external in, in, in envir in, in environment and to a great degree render that plant impenetrable okay. right so fungal spores are microbes that are able to really penetrate and get into the, the, the tissue of the plant the beauty of um a farm your sankozeb mm -hmm. and your bravo is that they're they're, they're active in 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 in, in, in ingredient uh, has what we call multi-site act um act Activity. So it targets different sites within the mi mi mm -hmm. mi microbes and as such render them ineffective and it gives you extremely mm -hmm. good protection. So those are just some mm -hmm. of the, um, the, 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 the chemicals mm -hmm. that we should la last as, as well that is Im important mm -hmm. in the case of a bacterial issue because a regular fungicide will not give you bacterial can can um, um, control because bacteria is somewhat different mm -hmm. from fungus despite being a micro. So what we recommend mm -hmm. in, in the control of bacteria is coside and coside contains your copper hydroxide and mm -hmm. is highly effective. All right, so, so Richard, that's, a, that's really, that's a lot of information. And of course, so for persons out there, viewers, they're tuned in, you know, um, these are our most have products. And of course, you know, as, as, as with the... Um, the, the pest management solutions, all of the, the, the disease management products that you just highlighted, Richard, you can get those from mm -hmm. our, our five h and agro stores. You can call our market development officers. You can also reach out to any of our um, technical sales representative and they will not only ensure that you have these products added to your farming plan, but they will also be on site and provide the necessary technical support and, 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 and right. advice to really and walk, you, true, walk you through the true, process true, to ensure that true, you're really true, true, true doing the right things and you're in essence getting the right yield from, from your crops when you plant. And I do agree a hundred percent and farmers need to um, understand that the sweet put um, the Irish potato seed season mm -hmm. it falls within the, the cooler um, mm -hmm. time of the year or the rainy season and mm -hmm. that is when you really you're have, really, have you're really your need to be, to the, be the getting all of those issues stuff, coming yeah. about right all, all right. right so thank you so much for joining us Richard happy to have had you lovely people when we return we're gonna be speaking with the lovely Janet Walker Berry HNL Agro's technical sales representative for the Northwestern region. Stay tuned. Right. Janet, thank you so much for joining us here today on Let's Talk Potatoes, Irish Potatoes. Now, we heard, you know, from, from, from Richard and Andre and Kingsley just now, you know, about land management, weed management and disease management. But of course, an important part of ensuring that your, your Irish potatoes really grow and grow well has to do with the, with the fertilization and, and the nutrition. So talk to us a little bit more about the, the, um, the fertilization program for Irish potatoes. Well, thanks for having me, Sherilyn. Okay. 
um, for any crop, including Irish potato, you have to feed the crop, you have to give the crop what it needs mm -hmm. in order for it to give you the yield mm -hmm. that you require because farming is a business. So, mm -hmm. of course, um, we have to mention our bass stimulants such as our algas. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when I we're... I use algas, guys. Trust me, I use algas on my tomatoes, on my, um, my sweet pepper, and also on my scotch bonnet pepper. I can take it from me, and me not too, too grow, you know, things, you know, so, so tough, but the things are growing. Sorry to cut you, Janet. Continue. Yes, just to give you some good features, it will um, allow the plant to have a very good rooting system. It's like it's feeding, so if it's eating more mm -hmm. and it's absorbing what it's supposed to have, then the yield is going to increase. Okay. Also, if the plant goes through any stressful period, mm -hmm. then it allows the plant to recoup and just bounce back. It's like you're taking a vitamin. But Janet, what could I stress out a plant? Just environmental conditions, mm -hmm. lack of nutrients, mm -hmm. you know, and just changes in general. Okay. Stop stressing your plants, guys. Okay, so let me move on now to the nutrients mm -hmm. that will be used, you know, for Irish potato. So we fertilize at two points. Mm -hmm. We fertilize at planting and of course in another four to five weeks when you're molding the Irish potato. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the fertilizer that we use at planting is going to be 14, 28, 14, mm -hmm. and we use about six bags. Sorry to cut you, Janet, but you said 14, 28, 14. Um, what do each of those numbers represent? Well, it is just a matter of the nitrogen, mm -hmm. the potassium, phosphorus and the potassium okay. and of course you notice that we have a high potash because of course we need these for the development of the plant mm -hmm. and we can also use 12 24 24 of course uh, we give you options because we want you to be flexible mm -hmm. and be able to use in the event that something is not available mm -hmm. so you use half a tablespoon and you drill it and you put it underneath before you place mm -hmm. the seed the, the, um, the potato seed now at four to five weeks at molding, which is about 28 to 35 days, mm -hmm. you would just, just do a side dressing. Of course, you use another six bags. Mm -hmm. So that is just to go along the sides. Mm -hmm. And of course, you don't want um, the fertilizer to evaporate. So therefore, mm -hmm. that's why you do a little covering. So ah. we say side dressing. So we try to cover it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, 10 days after transplanting and every 15 days, we use our liquid feed, which is the calcium boron because that is going to assist the plant again to be sustainable and to develop in the areas and for the foliar and that is a foliar application mm -hmm. right so, so of course foliar meaning the, the leaves on the foliage that is to the top okay yes and you're correct to the leaves now that rate is going to be 22 milliliters mm -hmm. per gallon and for an entire acre you'll just need one liter one so, liter? yes because for it is entire 22 acre? milliliters right Strong. per gallon mm. okay okay and of course remember it's a thousand milliliters that make up a liter mm -hmm. so hence we have to adhere to these rates okay now the next thing we do is that 10 days after germination and every subsequent 10 days we use our multi-feed solanaceous mm -hmm. right so what this will do is that it will assist the plant you know to grow and develop the foliar mm -hmm. the foliar area mm -hmm. so that the root can be sustained and you're having better quality mm -hmm. that at the harvest mm -hmm. now the rate for that is 10 grams per gallon mm -hmm. it comes in a nice little sachet mm -hmm. it has a measuring cup Ooh. so very much easy for easy. you mm -hmm. and this is you know precise nutrition because it is for this family right so it's specifically for potatoes and those tubers Okay, all right, no problem. Um, so now that we've, 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 you've, you've told us, Janet, about you know, the, the fertilizers and the nutrition for the potato, what are some of the, the some general best grain tips that you would give to our viewers for Irish potato? Well, first of all, you're gonna be treating your plants, so you have to protect yourself. And of course, you're gonna wear your, your protective gear, so your goggles or your glasses, your gloves. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're covering over your, your clothes. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're gonna have the covering over the water boot and not inside because you don't want the chemicals to be going in mm -hmm. on your feet, right? Remember that when you're opening your chemical, it's the most potent time. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, persons tend to think that you mm -hmm. don't have to be, have on your gears, but it's mm -hmm. most dangerous. Mm -hmm. So at all times, wear your protective gears. Now, when you re-entry and pre-harvest intervals, as outlined on the pesticide labels, they should be strictly adhered to. Mm -hmm. So if I say to you, you have to have a post-harvest, mm -hmm. you know, not 15 days after, 21 days, mm -hmm. you cannot decide to do it seven days. Mm. Because then, you know, we are providing for persons who are eating and we can cause mm -hmm. all sorts of problems. Okay. And we're going to be using the chemicals that are to be used on plants mm -hmm. and not those to be used on animals, whether or not the effect is good, mm -hmm. because all of these are tested and mm -hmm. proven. So, so if we'll it's not broken, don't. don't try to fix it. So we have to give, give, so they really need to ensure that they give time in between, you know, when they right. apply the products and when they're, they're, they're harvested for, Definitely. for human consumption. So we're not going to apply the same pesticide with the same active ingredients. So say, for example, I have like a karate mm -hmm. and maybe another product with the same active ingredient. You cannot rotate those two. Mm -hmm. You'll have to choose another product with another active ingredient mm -hmm. because then if you're using the same active ingredient, truly you're not rotating. Okay. And it, the, the, would it, is it then that the crops would build up a... Um, a well, the, 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 the pests, the pests would will develop a tolerance. a tolerance and then okay. it will not be effective. effective. So, you know, after a while, you find that some products are off the market for a while mm -hmm. because it has been abused. Mm -hmm. So, the product is good. Mm -hmm. Do not abuse it, but use it properly. properly. All right, no problem. Thank you so much for joining us, Janet. Happy to have had you on today's, today's program, you know, and, you know, for the, for the viewers out there. <laughs> Um, you know, thank you so much for, for tuning in. We sincerely hope that you've learned all you need to know to let your Irish potatoes grow. Of course, feel free to contact any of our h &L Agro stores for further details on Irish potato seeds as we get ready for the upcoming season. And of course, happy planting!